Did you know that your battle with the devil is in your mind? That's where he tries to take ground in your life. Either you're going to let him win or you're going to let him lose. I choose let him lose. Stay tuned. Hello, Sean Paul here with Life's Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to start a brand new series, and it is Managing Your Mind, Thoughts and Imaginations. See, it's so important that you as a believer in Christ Jesus understand that the devil is not going to just bust in your door and say, here I am, I'm the devil, and I'm going to destroy your life. No, how he destroys your life is through schemes and plans, and that is attacking your mind with falsehood, with lies, deception. That's how he's going to destroy your life. He can get you to believe those falsehoods and lies, and you follow that path, you're going to follow a path of destruction in your life. You're going to follow a path of darkness in your life. But if you understand how he attacks you, and you know how to combat that, and you know how to overcome that through God's word, guess what? You're going to see victory in your life, and you're going to see yourself walking in the blessings that God has for your life, because you're not going to allow him to hinder your life. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you know, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And once you become born again, the Word of God says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone. The new life has begun. Amen. So as soon as you give your life to Jesus Christ, your spirit is born again. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And guess what? The new life has begun. That's up to you. That's up to you. You can become born again, but if you do nothing with it, it's going to lay by the wayside. And unfortunately, uh, just like the, the parables of the seeds of the farmer, you know, unfortunately, you could die off and you could not see the fulfillment of God in your life of what his plans and purposes in your life. So it's very important that you understand that just because you give your life to Jesus Christ doesn't mean that everything stops right there and it's all done. No, you have a life that has begun new, and you now need to find that new life, need to walk out that new life in your in your uh, new life in Christ. John 3, 3, 5 says, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you could not see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into the mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God. God without being born of water and the Spirit. <clears throat> so what it's saying is, is when you give your life to Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God comes and lives inside of you. So you are now born of the Spirit. So see, when we commit our lives to Jesus, our spirits are new and our spirits are perfect. We have perfect, brand new spirits inside of us and who we are. Amen. So see, there's no, you know, some people will say, well, there's spiritual healing. There's no spiritual healing whatsoever. No, there's a healing of our soul. There's a healing of the, the, the trials and tribulations and the troubles that our soul and our mind has gone through. Cause obviously there's some people that has gone through, uh, crazy things in their life, the unfortunate situations in their lives that has damaged their minds. It has damaged their souls. That can be healed, but your spirit is brand new. There's no healing of your spirit. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus, as the word says. A new life has begun. Amen. So see, don't let anybody say that there's spiritual healing. There's no such thing as spiritual healing. So see, uh, what is not born again when you give your life to Jesus Christ is your mind and your body. Amen. So see, that's what we're going to focus on in this whole entire series is your mind. Your mind is what needs to be renewed. Your mind is what needs to be uh, 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 washed through by the Word of God. Amen? So see, as I said when I started this series, that our battle is in our minds. That is where we're going to win or lose. Amen? So see, I don't want to say where we're going to lose because to me that's that is not what the Word of God says. We are not designed to lose. We're designed to be victorious through the Word of God. We're designed to live a life of victory in the Word of God. And those promises are available to us, and we can walk in those promises. Amen? Those promises are ours to live in, 
because we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Amen. So see, there it breaks it down right there. We we are a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. So see, I like to say this. I am a spiritual being. I am a spiritual being that has a soul and I live in a body. Amen. So that's who we are. See, we want to look, we want to so much so focus on the outward man, what we look at and our appearance and, and, and what people think of us and so forth. But see, we don't understand that who we are is we are a spiritual being first and foremost. When we go, uh, when we die and go to heaven, our spirits will go to heaven. Amen. Our bodies are not going to go to heaven. Amen. So see, we need to understand that we are spiritual beings first and foremost. And then it says the definition of a spirit and soul. What is your spirit? The spirit is, it, it, the Greek word is pneuma. It refers to the part of man that connects and communicates with God. See, my spirit communicates with God. When I pray and I believe that I hear the still small voice of God, I believe that he is communicating with my spirit. He is speaking to my spirit. And then what I do is my spirit will speak to my soul or my mind. Amen. So that's uh, what what part of our who we are as a being will speak to God is our spirits. And God speaks to our spirits. So our spirit differs from our soul because our spirit is always pointed towards and exists exclusively for God. Amen. So see, our soul as I said earlier, needs to be renewed in God's word. Amen. Our spirits is not speaking to God. Our spirits are not, or excuse me, I apologize. Our souls are not speaking to God. Our souls are not connected to God. Our spirits are connected to God. Amen. So see, uh, our souls are self-centered. Our souls are, are uh, you know, of the old nature. I'm not saying that that once we become new creatures in Christ, our souls can be renewed, but that's our part. That's our doing. That's who we are. Amen. So see, the joy, the comfort, and the peace of God's present can only be experienced in our spirits. Amen. See, it's really important that people understand this, that there's a difference between a soul and our spirit. Many people will speak, be, speak as if it's one, one and the same, but it's not one and the same. Our souls is our minds. Our spirits are what communicates with God, what connects with God, is who we are. Our spirits are perfect when we give our lives to Jesus Christ. Amen? So it's very important that we understand that as we go forward. So while everyone's soul is fully active, not everyone's spirit is active. So when, before I gave my life to Jesus Christ, my spirit was not active. My spirit was dead. My spirit was not being utilized. It was just my soul and my body communicating to each other. Whatever my body wanted, my flesh wanted, my soul gave it to it. My soul tried to, to seek ways to fulfill the desires of my flesh, whether it was good or bad. Amen? So see, my soul lived to please my flesh and my... Amen? So see, it's very important that we understand that. But once we gave our lives to Jesus Christ, our spirits become active. Amen. So again, our God communicates with our spirit. We we cannot ignore our spirits. Amen. That's what we need to learn to, to develop is that our spirits are in control of our lives, not our soul or our flesh. Our spirits is the one that tells our mind to shut up and stop thinking these things. Stop doing these type of things. These things are not acceptable. See, we need to be sensitive to our spirits and we need to learn to train and develop our souls to be godly, to be holy. Amen. So see, what is, you know, our souls are interwoven together with mind and heart. Amen. So that's what makes up our souls is our mind and heart. A lot of people try to refer the heart as their spirit, but that's not the case. So our mind is the intellect, the memory, and the process as far as like sight, sound, and touch. But our heart thinks, 
It's got emotions, love, hate, joy, sorrow, peace, bitterness, courage, fear, feels. It feels it's got personality and character. I mean, so our mind and our hearts are interwoven together to come up and make up of the soul. Amen. So then what is the heart? It's very important to understand this. The Bible uses words, again, a word heart, primarily to refer to the ruling center of the whole person, the, the spring of all desires. The heart is seen as the seat of the will, the intellect and feelings, the character, the personality and mind are approximate modern terms for the Bible's meaning for heart. I'm in. So again, character, personality, and mind are terms now today being used as far as what the Bible refers to as heart. So heart, soul, and mind can be unique, but they can also be used interchangeably often as it happens in the New Testament. I'm in. So I'm just kind of reading some things that I wrote here. So soul, heart, and mind are interwoven like a car engine, so to speak, so in a car engine, you have the fuel pump, piston, starter. That all makes up the engine. Obviously, there's more parts to it, but that all makes up the engine. So again, character, personality, mind all makes up the soul. So then the same as far as with an engine, piston, fuel pump, starter. That's all in one inclusive as far as an engine. Okay, so then today... In this message, we're going to be dealing with the mind, heart, and soul. Okay? So, the Bible says this. Once we give our lives to Jesus Christ, Romans 12, 2, it says, And be not conformed to the world, be transformed by renewing your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. See, that's what we must do. Once born again Christians, believers in Christ, we must renew our minds. So how do we renew our minds? We renew our minds in his word, in God's word. So when we read God's word, we are renewing our minds. We are renewing our thinking. We're renewing the way we, we once thought to now how we think. I can tell you this, as a believer in Christ Jesus for the last 32 years of my life, I can tell you, I am not the same man that I was on August, I don't know exact date, but August, I believe, was 6 of 1990 when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I am not the same man that I, that I was to this day. And even a week later, I remember giving my life to Jesus Christ, and I remember, you know, I would have anger issues where I would allow anger to rise up inside of me. I would cuss like a sailor. I was in the military. I would cuss just horribly right in front of my wife and right in front of my daughter. I would cuss. I would say horrible things. But I remember uh, driving down the road and this man flipped me off as I was driving down the road. And I went to go chase him, try to catch him. It was like the Lord caught me and he said, stop now. Stop doing this. You're not living this way. You're, this is not who you are. See, that's the part of me that was being renewed. My mind was being changed. I was realizing, hey, you are not a man that should be living in anger. You should not have anger inside of you. You should put this away. You should not be cussing and cursing. See, that was the part of me. My mind was becoming renewed. Why? Because I was living the Word of God. I was reading the Word of God. I was allowing the Word of God to wash my mind. So see, we needed to hide God's word in our hearts. Psalms 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart. Hide God's word in your heart, not just in your mind, but in your heart, down deep inside of who you are. Amen? Because again, remember I was talking about character, personality. It's the very seed of who we are is in our hearts. So we need to do this by meditating on God's word, not just reading it, but meditating it. Meditating means that you're chewing on it. You're chewing on it. You're thinking about it. You're pondering on it. You're, you're mulling it over in your mind. You're saying, what does this actually mean? How does this apply to me as a person and who I am? See, that is meditating on God's Word. See, this is be something that we should do on a daily, consistent basis. Amen? 
you know, I'm not bragging on myself and I'm not, I haven't always been there as a believer, but I can tell you as a person now, what I do is I get up in the morning. The, some of the first things that I do is I go turn on my computer. I have my Bible software there. I have my notes as far as uh, what I'm currently studying at that time. And you might say, well, Sean, you're a minister. Obviously you need to do this. No, we all believers in Christ Jesus need to do something in studying God's word. It needs to be a part of who we are as believers in Christ. Because there's no way you're going to renew your mind by just living your life and saying, you know, claiming a title, claiming a title, oh, I'm a Christian, but you're not renewing your mind. You're not washing your mind. That's the only way you're going to renew your mind is by reading God's word and allowing it to transform who you are and what you're thinking and how you operate and how you live. I mean, so see, that is hiding God's word in your heart is by continuously reading the word and applying the word, washing your mind and saying, no, that's not how I'm going to think. I'm not thinking this way. I'm not doing that. That's not the way I live. See, that's washing your mind. Now the Bible says that we need to prepare for action. First Peter 1 13 says, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. As believers in Christ Jesus, we need to point our minds to God's word. We need to point our minds to the kingdom of God. We need to point our minds to the way we live in the kingdom of God. You are no longer the same creature that you were when you gave your lives to Jesus Christ. Your life needs to be consumed with the kingdom of God. I'm in. I'm not talking about being weird and you can't have any other conversation other than about Jesus. I'm not talking about that. But what I'm saying is, is you need to point your life towards Jesus. Your, your hobbies, your, your whole entire life and what you watch on TV and what you do should be washed through the word. You should consider everything. Obviously, you know, hobbies, you know, woodworking, it's harmless, okay? You know, uh, planting a garden, harmless. But if you're doing things that that is harmless, meaning let's say you have a hobby that draws you into bars or draws you into environments that is not healthy, that is not holy, uh, environments that is not a good testimony in your life. See, you need to wash that through and say, wait a minute, you know, I'm, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't be doing that. I have a friend that gave his life to Jesus Christ and he owned a bar. You need to wash your life through that. You need to say, wait a minute, this really is not, uh, uh, you know, a testimony unto Christ. Yeah, I need to reconsider. This is not an environment that I should be in. See, that's how you need to uh, prepare for action in your life is you need to be considering God's word in the way that you live, you know? So see, you know, like, for example, preparing for action. When I was in the military, I lived in Germany. We lived right close to the border of uh, Czechoslovakia and Germany. And uh, so we had to go and train to go to the border and protect the border of Germany. So uh, what we did is, is probably for about six months, we trained very hard. And part of that training was identifying military vehicles. I'll never forget, we had like a three-story barracks that we lived in, and uh, we had access to the attic, and we trained up in the attic, and we had like this big projector, and they would just literally just one slide after another, military vehicles, and we had to identify those. We had to just be able to boom, 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 and we had to be able to identify those vehicles one after another. So see, that's what we need to do is we need to identify the way the enemy is trying to attack our minds. We didn't need to identify the schemes and plans that the enemy is trying to work in our lives. We need to constantly be observant of what the enemy is trying to do in our lives. Now, again, I'm not trying to say, oh, we need to be weird and start looking for the devil behind coffee pots and stuff like that. You know, I, I don't, I don't live that way. You know, I just know the word of God I live the Word of God. I practice the Word of God on a consistent, constant basis in my life. I constantly examine my thought life. I constantly examine things that I'm thinking. Right now, I'm going through a series uh, I'm studying on is pride. So, you know, as I've been studying on that, I've been identifying uh, uh, behaviors 
that that can lay, that that lead from pride. Meaning, if you have pride in your lives, these are some of the behaviors that you'll have. And and you know, I'm just going to be honest with you. I have been noticing some of those behaviors in my own life. So what I'm doing is preparing for action and say, I'm putting a stop to these type of behaviors. I'm putting a stop to these behaviors because these are unbecoming and these type of behaviors are prideful. You know, I'm not talking about horrible things that I'm doing in my life. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, just, you know, maybe just, uh, you know, when I observe somebody and I see them do something, I'm like, hey, that ain't right. You know, I come with like a critical thought, you know, I'm going to put a stop to those things because those things are not godly. Those type of thoughts are not godly. I'm going to I'm going to constantly examine my my words and I'm speaking about people. I'm going to be uh uplifting. I'm not going to be critical of people. You know, it's just very important that we are constantly allowing the word of God to wash our minds and continually renew us. Yes, I've been living this for 32 years. I've been living this life for 32 years, but I still have things in my life that I need to be constantly consistently fixing in my life. So that's the type of life that I want to live in my life is I want to be perfecting myself. I'm not trying to say I'm better than anybody else. I am living my own life. I'm running my own race. I'm focusing on myself, and I am not worrying or concerned about other people and the way they live their lives. They need to choose how they live their lives. I'm in, so see, preparing for action is something about that I'm doing for my own life. I'm in. So again, the Bible says that we need to transform to renew, we need to renew our minds. That's that's what we need to be focusing on, on a consistent, constant basis in our lives. Now, I've been talking about the devil. I don't talk a lot about the devil. I don't focus on the devil because I'm not concerned about the devil. I know how he operates. I know how he tries to work in my life. I just stay true to that, meaning I just uh, build defensive areas in my mind. I do b- build defensive areas in my life. To where the devil just really is not an issue in my life. I'm in. So see, that's just the way we just need to focus. So it says, Ephesians 6, 11, it says, put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand against all strategies and deceits of the devil. See, that's all it is. Strategies of deceit and manipulation and lies. I'm in. So the devil is a strategist. He does this through schemes and plans. So how does he do it? Through discouragement, temptations as far as to sin, unforgiveness. You know, you know, this is not something I really deal with in my life, but I know there are people that deal with unforgiveness so much so in their hearts that really it's a massive hindrance in their life. You know, it's something that we just need to get free of. I'm not saying that I haven't dealt with unforgiveness because I have dealt with unforgiveness in my life. There are people that God showed me and says, you hold unforgiveness in your heart towards him. You need to let it go. You need to be free of unforgiveness in your life. Amen. Fear, accusations, deceptions, spiritual laziness, doubts of God's word. So what it comes down to is this, is we got to learn to control our imaginations. Romans 1, 21 says, yes. They knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Now, I had a conversation with somebody the other day on Facebook, and I normally, I normally, one, do not comment on things on Facebook. I just know it's an endless conversation. It goes nowhere. It doesn't change anybody's hearts or minds. So it just is totally useless. But I made a comment on a Christian's post and somehow, some way, it was evident an unbeliever made a comment on that. And I just responded back kindly. I didn't say anything bad to them. But then they said something and it was just obvious that they their their whole thought and mindset was just a total opinion of who God is but it was not based on God's word. And that's the scary part is that so many people live their lives to where they have not renewed their minds in God's word. They have not found out who God is and they've developed their own opinions of who God is. You know, another translation of Romans 1, 21, it says, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. So see, the word imaginations means 
thoughts, reasonings, deliberations, conclusions, and speculations. So, you know, the word again says vain in their imagination, and the vain means to be empty, futile, unsuccessful, senseless, and worthless. So there are people that will come up with imaginations that are totally worthless whatsoever, and they are not based on God's word at all, and they refuse to renew their minds in such a way that they will have thoughts that are useful, thoughts that are godly, thoughts that are not darkened, that are not speculations, that are not deliberations. And it's sad that there are so many believers in Christ Jesus that literally refuse to read the Word of God, apply the Word of God to their lives, and they are just as guilty as unbelievers in Christ that come up with their opinions of who God is. And because of that, they do live in a life of confusion. They're living in a life of dis- defeat. They're living in a life of disappointments and discouragement and de- dis- uh, depression and anxiety. Now, you know, some might say, boy, you're being very critical of people. No, I'm not being critical of people. I'm just expressing the truth that sadly that there are believers in Christ that live in such defeat because they refuse to renew their minds and they refuse to control their thought life. Amen. So we're, we're at the end of time right now. We got to uh, continue this message later, but just, 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 just understand as I leave you is you've got to learn to manage your thought life. You got to learn to allow uh, your mind to be renewed and washed on a consistent, constant basis by reading God's word, by applying God's word to your life. And as you do that, you're going to see yourself living a life in such victory that God has for you, the life that God wants for you. Amen. So let me go ahead and pray for you before we leave. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for all those that are listening. I pray that their lives are renewed in your word, their lives that they're living the life that you want for them because they are renewing their life, their minds, and they're seeing in your word the type of life that you want for them. They're they're seeing areas in their life that's bringing defeat into their life. They're putting a stop to those areas, and they're seeing victory rise up in their lives. They're becoming mature believers in Christ. Their thoughts of you are no longer opinions, but they're backed up in God's word. And I just praise you and thank you that all those that are listening are are living, that are living or will be living a victorious life in your son, Jesus Christ. And I and Father, I just praise you and thank you that anybody that are listening right now that doesn't know you, I pray that they will pray a salvation prayer. They will invite your son, Jesus Christ, into their heart by saying, Lord Jesus, I want to make you the Lord of my life. I ask you to come into my heart right now. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I thank you. I thank you that I am a new creature in Christ Jesus now, and I choose to live this life in Christ and and be, begin to renew my mind and become a, a a new new believer in Christ. And and just right now, if you're praying that right now with me, just say this, Father. Help me live this life through your spirit, through your Holy Spirit that has come into my heart. Help me live this life and help me live this life victoriously. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And I just pray that you have a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. Hello, Sean Paul here with Life is Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching. Our prayer is that your life is inspired to run the race in Jesus Christ. Have an amazing day. God bless you. Bye-bye.